everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy holiday week. I hope you are all enjoying your weather wherever you are. I'm having snow, so it's very appropriate that the title of our episode today is Let It Sew. I have three projects I'm going to go through today. I know it sounds like a lot, but you know, this year is very different for the holidays and I thought that we all might be getting creative, having a little bit more time in our sewing rooms to make some great projects. And um, if you're like me, you start your holiday decorating the weekend after Thanksgiving. It's just a tradition I've always done with my family. And so since we're all getting geared up for that, I, um, I have three kind of quick and easy projects that you can choose from to work on this weekend. So thank you for joining me. For all of you new to So What, we always have a giveaway every week, and this week is no different. Anyone who likes the Sulky page on Facebook, who likes this post or loves or comments, asks a question, all of you who are engaging with the post in some way or the video in some way today are eligible to win our great prize. And it is a holiday assortment of Sulky 30 weight cotton threads. It's valued at $29.99 and I'm gonna be using that 30 weight cotton thread in one of the projects I will go over today. And if you've never used it before, it's very easy to use. Lots and lots of uses for the 30 weight cotton thread, quilting, applique, even some machine embroidery. So we will go over that in a little bit. Now to start off today, I wanted to let you all know we are having a pre-Black Friday sale right now, 35% off your order at sulky.com. So make sure that you write down this coupon code, BLACK35, okay? You have to enter that at the checkout in order to get your discount. So mark that down because I will be going over a lot of really great things that you're gonna want to add to your cart today to make sure that you have these on hand for creating your holiday projects and things that are coming up. All right, so keep those comments coming. A lot of, I see a lot of you, hello, hi, Claudia, hi, Sharon. All right, keep them coming, guys. We're gonna do um, a couple of Q&A sessions uh, during the episode today. So I wanna start out by talking about some great little gift ideas that are new at sulky.com. And while you have this 35% off coupon, you're going to want to add these to your cart. They're relatively inexpensive and great little stocking stuffer items, great items to give to your sewing friends, your quilting bee, your guild members, things like that, or yourself. Add them to your own wish list, okay? So <laughs> I'm gonna start off with a little bit of sewing jewelry. Yes, you all see me wearing this necklace quite a bit. Um, in fact, I wear it so often that I couldn't find it today. Otherwise, I'd be wearing it right now. Instead, I have a little sewing machine pin on, which we've got some of these enamel pins at sulky.com as well. But these are great items to add to your wish list. Like I said, gift to your sewing buddies. Um, so you'll want to grab this up, especially while you can get 35% off. We also have our cookie cutter bundle. Now, this, you can't really see the cookie cutters, I'll show you them in a minute, but this bundle gives you enough fabric to make a really cute pot holder project, a spool of my favorite new polystar thread, which is, again, that polyester thread with flecks of metallic running through it. And what I did was quilted along, just straight lines using that poly star thread. Um, did I say poly deco? I meant to say poly star. I don't even know what I said five seconds ago. Hopefully you do. Um, it comes with poly star <laughs> in that silvery black color that you see there on the image, that this really cute snow sweets fabric. So, you know, you can make this and gift it to someone you can obviously make it for yourself for the holidays when you're getting into the holiday baking spirit. And it comes with some 
a machine embroidery design if you would like to embellish the back or the front of it in some way. Very, very cute little bundle that you can grab. And brand new, we decided to offer the cookie cutters as a separate purchase. So if you're not interested in grabbing up that super, super cute fabric and thread bundle, which it's a great deal, obviously, if you get it all together, you can just grab the cookie cutters as a separate purchase and you'll be all set for your holiday baking, themed all in sewing, quilting, a little thread spool, a little scissors. I mean, how cute is that? All right. Just a couple of other things to go through before we get to the projects. More sewing jewelry. I know I am obsessed. I just cannot help myself. <laughs> if I see something with a sewing machine on it and it's earrings, bracelet, necklace, I just, I have to have it. I am obsessed. All right. <laughs> this is a cute little bracelet that says maker on it. It's just a great little gift idea. So I wanted to show it to you. Also brand new at sulky.com. We've got these really cute little sewing themed gift tags. Super inexpensive. You can add this to your cart, no problem. It might just take you over the edge to free shipping as well. So think about that. But if you are making handmade gifts for the holidays, of course you wanna add a gift tag that shows that you actually made the gift, right? So cute little sewing machines, little vintage pattern gals, thread spools, quilting uh, motifs, super cute. So these are all bundled together um, in one little pack of uh, sewing, uh, sewing gift tags. And then speaking of putting things in great little packages, We've also got these cute wishing you a quilty Christmas Christmas cards. Love it. So especially if you are gifting somebody a quilt this Christmas, why not give them a card that kind of goes with that gift and gives a little personality to it, right? So I know lots of things you can add to your gift. Now, I talked about this a couple weeks ago because I was really excited to get these in the store. This is a wool pressing mat. If you have never used a wool pressing mat before, you will never go back. It is like pressing both sides of the fabric at once. You don't have to flip over your quilt block to then press the other side. Keeps your seams nice and flat, um, circulates that heat um, around the fabric. These are just really, really great to have. Brand new at sulky.com, so you can grab one for yourself and wrap it and put it under the tree and just wonder who gave you that? Who was so thoughtful to wrap that up and put it under the, pre under the tree for you? All right, okay. Oops, those are our little gift cards. Oh, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting all out of order. All right, so that's my spiel about the gift items because while you get your 35% off and you're grabbing all of your thread and stabilizers to make the gift ideas and the little projects that I'm about to go over, be sure to add those little things to your cart, okay? If you get them now, you'll have plenty of time to wrap them, gift them, all that good stuff. All right, so the first project I'm going to go over today I linked to this kit in the description of today's post. So go up to the description, hit the little button that says see more, and you'll see every single thing that I'm talking about today is linked in the post. So that's where you will find the tutorials, the kits, that great freebie I'm giving away today to all of you who are liking and commenting and sharing, um, which is our 30 weight cotton thread holiday bundle. All those links are in the description of the post, so that's where you're gonna find it. Now, it's a little bit hard to see. I'm gonna enlarge this just a little bit for you. These are stockings in the shape of thread spools, right? How cute is this? So this is actually a paper piecing pattern for the front of the thread spool. It's a little bit hard to see in this image, but all of that red fabric is paper pieced. And if you use a striped fabric, um, when you paper piece it, it'll all go in these different directions and it'll look exactly like a thread spool. So you can dive into your fabric stash, grab up fabrics that you want to use, 
and then we have conveniently bundled the rest of the kit for you. So you will get the paper solvy that you need for the paper piecing patterns. If you love to paper piece, foundation paper piece, and you have never used sulky paper solvy, you will be amazed, okay? It is life changing. Why you ask? Because you don't have to go in with tweezers, get out all those little bits and pieces of paper, risk pulling out your stitches because you're tearing the paper away from your work. Paper Solvy is water soluble. So what you will do after paper piecing is get a little Q-tip cotton swab, dip it in some water, run it along the seams, and lift all of the paper away. It is revolutionary and you all will love it. So it comes with paper solvy, comes with soft and sheer extra, another little stabilizer to keep things nice and tidy, comes with a can of KK2000, two spools of blendables 30 weight cotton thread, which I said I'm gonna talk about in a little while, and then some construction thread as well. So you can make yourself lots of these little spool stockings with this kit, all right? So I'm gonna go over it a little bit here so you get the gist of how this comes together. For those of you who haven't done paper piecing before or um, you just wanna see the thread in action, here we go. All right, so you're going to receive this paper piecing pattern. And what you're going to do is print it out onto a sheet of that paper solvy. It fits right into your printer you print it out, and that is what you're going to use as your pattern as you work through piecing all of the cute little fabrics together. All right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is just a little photo overview of how the foundation paper piecing works. So you're using this paper solvy as your foundation, and you are actually sewing your fabric pieces to it. And you're going to follow the letter or the, excuse me, the numbers and the letters to uh, understand the order by which to piece the pattern together. And the reason that your KK2000 is there is for quilting later on, but also you can use it to kind of secure your pieces as you're moving through the work. So love me some KK2000. Here's a little bit more so you can see kind of how the paper piecing comes together. There is also a full tutorial for this process that you can get when you get your kit, okay? And if you go to the link to grab the kit, you'll see the link to the post where all the instructions for understanding paper piecing live. So you can actually preview this whole project and get a full on tutorial that you can print and have next to you while you are creating your stockings. And here's just a little bit more of that paper piecing process. I just kind of wanted to give you a photo overview so you can see the different pieces coming together. Now you can go with all one color of fabric. Like I said, using stripes is a really cool idea because as you can see, these are all different um, shaped triangles. And as the stripes get pieced on, um, it'll look like thread is winding around your stocking. Now just make sure that your thread is all going, or excuse me, your stripes are all going horizontal. It would be quite tragic to have one piece where the stripes are going vertically. Okay. So now we've got our top portion of the sp the stocking really, and the bottom portion, and then you sew them together along that line, all right? Then you have your basic center of the thread spool to build the top and bottom on and to continue to build your stocking. So here is that top and bottom piece that you will add on, and then you trim that up so that it looks like a thread spool. See where I'm going with this? and then the quilting begins, all right? You can quilt this however you like. You can do straight line quilting, again, mimicking kind of that thread spool look. You can go out a diagonal. 
you can do some echo quilting along all of those triangles, whatever you want to do. Now it does, the kit does come with a spool of red hued blendables and a spool of green hued blendables. Okay, so you wanna think about that when you're choosing the fabric for your project so that it all kind of goes together. And then it also comes with that white spool of thread that you saw in the kit picture. And that's what you will use to quilt that top and bottom piece of the thread spool. All right, so then we have our completed front of the thread spool. And then it's really just a matter of building the back pieces, creating your little pocket to put stuff in and adding that hanging loop. So I wanted to mention this project, you really wanna use these Clover Wonder Clips and we have those at sulky.com too. Again, another inexpensive little add-on to your cart. They're about six or seven bucks. You get enough definitely to do a thread spool stocking. Clover Wonder Clips are just so much better than pins. They allow you to clip through lots of layers. Even these little ones will clip through big bulky layers, holding them together while you're quilting, while you're binding, and just general construction. Love those clips too. Lots of you coming in and saying, love those clips. I know, you gotta get some. So I wanted to mention that those are also now available at sulky.com. Here are those wonder clips. We've got the um, cute little rainbow variety here. So grab up some of those. If you haven't tried them, you will start using them for absolutely everything. All right, so again, continuing with those clips so that you can secure the top and bottom pieces of your little spool stocking. And then you finish it according to the directions. Now, like I said, you'll be adding a little hanging loop and that is just some grow grain ribbon really simple and how cute are these this would be a great idea to wrap up a gift for a sewing friend let's say you grab up a bunch of those stocking stuffers i went through earlier gift them in this little stocking and then wrap that up and give it to them it's so such a cute idea to add something homemade with something store-bought to really round out the gift and make it really special so that is Project number one, I'm gonna address some of the questions that have come in. Let's see. Oh, Betsy is saying, yes, those clips are so handy for various projects. Definitely. Lots of people loving paper piecing. Let me know if you've used paper solvy in your paper piecing projects, because like I said, if you have not, I mean, it, it blew my mind. I was like, of course, Sulky has come up with this and has had it for a long, long time. Uh, so I almost felt gypped that I didn't know that it had existed, um, you know, prior to me working at Sulky. So I just feel the need to share the love with all of you and make sure you grab up some paper solvy because you will absolutely love it. Lots of people loving those clips. Yes, you, you really cannot have enough. <laughs> I know people that have made little pouches specifically for their wonder clips so they don't lose them in their sewing room. They're that precious. So, <laughs> oh, yep, Esther keeps them in a vintage sewing tin. There you go. See, they have a special place. <laughs> and yes, the clips do come in all different sizes, but at sulky.com, we've got the little small ones. So just, just to let you know. Yes, the clips are great, great, great for binding as well. Okay, so I guess these are a bunch of, um, these are actually a bunch of comments. So we haven't gotten to many questions yet. Keep them coming. I'm gonna go through our next project. And if you have um, you know, additional questions, we will address them momentarily. Oh, this is a good question from Diane. Can you use paper solvy with a laser printer? Yes, you can. You can use it with a laser or an inkjet printer. Um, I recommend just putting it, putting your printer on the low ink setting. Um, just You just don't need that much ink. All you need to do is see the, the letters and numbers. 
and the outline of your pattern piece. So it doesn't need to be super, super dark ink. Now remember, you'll be removing most of this. And if you keep your, um, rather than saturating the entire work to get rid of the paper, you can just run your cotton swab along the seam and lift your paper up. So if you have any worry about ink transferring to the fabric uh, when you're washing it away, that type of thing, no need. Just run your water across that seam, lift the paper up and out, and then you, you don't have to saturate the entire work and you don't have any risk of any ink um, transferring. So, all right. Judy says, paper piecing gives you the perfect points and a way to piece things that seem impossible. Exactly. I have seen the most intricate paper piecing patterns. You know, we work with MJ Kinman a lot. She is a quilt artist. She makes quilts that look like gemstones, like huge diamond looking quilts. They're absolutely amazing. You can check them out at sulky.com. We have a whole bunch of her kits available for her birthstone gems. There's one for every month of the year her diamond quilts, There's they come in four colorways. We've got all those kits at sulky.com. Now, those aren't paper pieced in this way where you would use paper solvy, but rather she uses freezer paper and pieces all those together. It's not paper piecing, but the reason I bring it up is because they're so amazing and you think to yourself, I could never do that but it's really just about following these letters and numbers in the same way you would for paper piecing and coming out with something absolutely beautiful. I have seen amazing paper pieced quilts done that are in an entire face portrait. And you think, I could never sew that. Well, with the help of Sulky Paper Solvy, you can, you can do it. <laughs> oh, Donna has the cookie cutter kit and loves it. That's great. Awesome. Have you made the cookies yet? I want to see pictures. Please send pictures. <laughs> okay, let's get to, um, oh, Betsy has a question about rayon thread. Is Sulky 40 weight, 100% rayon viscose good for machine embroidery? Yes, it is. It is actually what is recommended a lot for machine embroidery. So uh, that is my go-to machine embroidery thread. I also like to use poly deco sometimes. Um, it kind of depends on the end use of the project. So, um, but yes, 40 weight rayon, it's the way to go for machine embroidery for sure. Okay, so we're going to get to the next project if I can find my place here because I have so many photos to share with you today. All right, here we go. Next project is what I had behind me there next to my sewing machine because I just finished it recently. This is a cute little sewing themed ornament. Now you can put, speaking of machine embroidery, you can put whatever you want to on your little hanging pillow. See, it's just about the size of the palm of my hand. Really, really cute. You can gift this to somebody and it does double duty because after the holidays, you can put it next to your machine and have it be a little pin cushion right next to your sewing machine. Now you can whip these out so quickly you can assembly line these, dive into your fabric and trim stash. These aren't traditional, you know, Christmas colors or Hanukkah colors or anything like that because this is meant to last all year round. Like I said, put it next to your sewing machine after the holidays and stick your pins in it. So this uh, little cutie is made basically the same way you would make a regular pillow. It's just mini size. And what's great is, if you follow the link on the blog, you will get all the how-tos for this, as well as a free little applique pattern printable. So the little pattern that I created for this little tomato pin cushion is all ready for you to print out right from uh, the Sulky blog. So follow that link and you will get the pattern. So speaking of the Sulky 30 weight cotton thread, that is what I used for the applique part of this project. So the 30 weight thread is really nice and strong, comes in a lot of colors. You can get blendables, like I said, and I just chose 
colors that went with the fabrics that I found in my stash. And then I used a silver gray for the little uh, pins in the pin cushion. And what we're going to do is play around with our decorative stitches on the machine. You can go really simple and choose blanket stitches that, like I did, triple stitch for the needles, a little uh, circle stitch for the tops of the little pins, um, or you can choose different decorative stitches that you have on your machine. So these are the materials you need to gather. You need some thread spools, obviously, for your applique as well as construction, a little bit of trim, some fabric scraps. This is about, I want to say about four inches by four inches, okay? So you can definitely change up the size based on the motif you want to use. You could do a monogram on here. You can embroider somebody's name on here and, <clears throat> excuse me, and add it to their little gift bag. That would be so cute. All right, so also, I like to use Sulky Totally Stable when I am doing applique on like a quilting cotton. Now, what I also like to use is a little bit of soft and sheer extra. It all depends on the thickness of my fabric. Now, I went with totally stable on here because my fabric was a little bit thicker and uh, I, you know, I wanted it to really retain its shape over time, but you could also use soft and sheer extra and that would work too. Um, they're both a fusible stabilizer. Totally stable is actually a tearaway fusible. I know, it sounds weird. You can fuse it and also tear it away after. Now, I left it behind my applique so that it would stay there over time. And, you know, something like this where you're going to get a lot of use out of it and hang it on your tree, you know, you can just leave it behind the fabric for the rest of its life. All right, and then of course you need some sewing machine needles, um, good old organ needles there. And you wanna use a 9014 universal needle when you are working with the 30 weight cotton. Um, well, I used a universal for this. It would depend on uh, what you're using it for, but a 9014 you want for the size. All right. Let me figure out where I am here, okay. <laughs> Oh, so here's the little pattern, and that is the printable you're going to get from the blog post. So, uh, you know, the first thing to do is prepare your applique pieces. Now, this might be a little unconventional. I did not use fusible web for my applique pieces. This is such a quick and easy project, I just didn't really feel that it was necessary. Instead, I used the KK2000, that's right. I sprayed the back of my fabrics for the appliques with a light mist of KK2000. I put them in place onto the background fabric and then I started sewing. They didn't move or shift or anything and it was perfect. No need for the fusible web. All right, so once you prepare those pieces, oh, there's me using the KK2000, you want to also transfer those little needle marks and your little, uh, tomato details, there's little tomato detail stitches, uh, onto the fabric using some kind of chalk or, you know, removable marking pen. We've got a little Sulky chalk pen, or pencil rather, uh, that's brand new at sulky.com, super inexpensive, but these are great little marking tools and you can brush away anything that doesn't belong uh, with your little brush tip. So. Um, again, just another little cutie add-on. If you're that close to free shipping, just take it over the edge and get yourself something useful. <laughs> so transfer your little, oops, transfer your little marks and then set your machine up for your applique stitches. Now, like I said, I went with just a simple blanket stitch for uh, my tomato outline as well as a little tomato stem outline and I used a 2.0 width and a 2.0 length. That's really small because this is a really small applique. You don't wanna go with big old four inch or 4.0 wide stitches because then your stitches are gonna go way into the tomato and it's just gonna look a little weird. So you wanna go with a little uh, narrow uh, skinny 
uh, stitch of some kind. And you know, you can change this up and choose a different stitch if you like. You might find it uh, helpful to grab some scrap fabric, again, put the totally stable behind it, and do some practice stitches and just pick the applique stitches that you like for your tomato. All right. So then it's just a matter of stitching along that applique edge. And just be careful as you're going around the corners to make sure that your, uh, your uh, let's see, your left stitch is going into the fabric and your right stitch is going along that fabric edge, you know, if you're doing a blanket stitch. <clears throat> While I find my place, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. I hope you're having a sip of coffee as well, or beverage of choice. All right, so there is all of my applique stitching all done. And like I said, for the little pins, I used a triple, uh, triple straight stitch for the pins, and then I used a circle stitch for the little top of the pin. Now, if you don't have a circle stitch on your machine, you can just do a zigzag and go back and forth, do a wide zigzag in the center, and then go narrow at the top and bottom, and you'll create your own little circle. All right, so then it is a matter of adding the little trim piece. And yes, I know, I need a support group for pom-poms because, <laughs> I am still obsessed with pom-pom trim, all right? I had a little bit of leftover mini pom-pom trim and I thought that would just be perfect for this. You actually don't need a trim piece at all. Um, if you have a little bit of leftover rickrack, you could put that along the perimeter and just have the little bumpies of one side of the rickrack showing through along the edge of the little pillow ornament. Um, you could use a piece of grow grain ribbon and then you will just have a straight um, kind of trim peeking out. Or you could gather the ribbon and have a pretty little uh, gathered edge along your ornament. It is entirely up to you. I happen to have this in my stash and wouldn't you know it, I had just barely enough <laughs> to make it work. So first you wanna baste it along that front piece. And I used a zipper foot because my trim was really fat along that one edge. And I moved my needle over so that I could get pretty close to those pom-poms. Now it's gonna get sewn again. So you don't wanna go as close to the pom-poms as possible. You wanna give yourself room for that final stitch when you're sewing the two pieces together, which I'm showing here. Now, don't forget to add your little ribbon to the upper edge for your little hanger. So before you put that back piece on, put your little ribbon in place uh, so that it is folded toward the work, of course. And then again, I'm using those Clover Wonder Clips to clip my little ribbon in place along the trim um, so that I'm not pinning through all of those layers and potentially snagging the pom-pom trim. So another great use for those Clover Wonder Clips. All right, then you'll do uh, your, basically your final sewing machine stitch. And don't forget to leave yourself an opening for turning. Now I did this along the lower edge because I felt that was the least conspicuous. So it's up to you whether you wanna do it along the sides or lower edge, but don't do it along that top edge because you've got your ribbon hanger and you don't wanna compromise any of that. And then give it a good press from the right side. Be careful of your um, applique stitches. Just give it a good press and just know too, if it's a little bit wrinkly, you are gonna be stuffing this thing and a lot of those wrinkles will go away. So you really don't have to go crazy pressing this. Um, just, you know, give it a little press and uh, then you're going to stuff it with some fiber fill. And it's always amazing how much fiber fill you can actually get in a small four inch pillow. <laughs> you always need a little bit more than you think you do. And some of like the polyfill 
bags of fiber fill come with a really handy little poking tool for you to get that fiber fill into the corners really, really well. It's basically a glorified chopstick. So if you um, happen to keep takeout chopsticks, that type of thing, um, or you have some kind of tool like a chopstick, knitting needle perhaps, you can use that to really get in those corners and fill it out nicely. I didn't worry about my corners kind of poking out a little bit. I know that, you know, when you're making a traditional pillow, you don't really want that look of having these ears along the corner edges. So you kind of taper those in a little bit when you're sewing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so that your pillow actually kind of looks curved. And then when you stuff it, it has the illusion of being straight. Now, if you wanna do that for this little pillow, by all means, go right ahead. I just went ahead and did straight edges, kept it simple. I actually think it's kind of cute with the little um, corners poking out a little bit. All right, and then you just need to hand sew your opening shut. And I just used a little bit of a slip stitch. You could use a ladder stitch. They're kind of the same thing. Just whatever invisible stitch you know, um, go ahead and sew that right up. So it's just that simple. And like I said, you could use any motif here that you like, create your own applique and do the same method. Create lots of little ornaments to give to your family. Um, it's just a nice little keepsake, you know? You could, you, could, <laughs> you could do an applique of a face mask and put 2020 on it um, and give it to all of your friends and family. So that would be kind of fun. All right, so that's project number two. We have one more project left, and it is for our friends who are celebrating Hanukkah. But just like this project, you could use the same exact tutorial and choose a different design for the focal point of your project. So don't get hung up on, well, this is Christmas, and this is Hanukkah, this is Kwanzaa, this is sewing themed. You can personalize these however you like. That is the beauty of sewing and the beauty of machine embroidery is we have these great machines with all these built-in stitches. We have, we have embroidery libraries on our computer where we store all of these great, great designs. Dive into those and see what you haven't used. Check out your own stuff that you have stashed and you know, bring some things out of the woodwork and create something really, really personalized to you, to your likes, and to your holidays. So I'm gonna go through a couple of these questions and see what has come through before we get to our Hanukkah wall hanging. Glenda wants to know, what needle do you use with the Polystar thread? So with Polystar, that is another 30 weight thread. So you want to use a size 9014 needle. Now it depends on what you're doing with the Polystar. Are you quilting with it? Then I would use a quilting needle. Are you doing machine embroidery? Then use a machine embroidery or even a top stitch needle, depending on the, th the fabric that you're using. Um, are you doing some other types of decorative stitching? You can probably get away with a 9014 universal, universal needle. The important thing is that you're using a 9014 size. That gives you enough of a needle hole to accommodate that thick thread and enough room for that thread to kind of agitate or um, you know have some extra friction as it's moving through the machine. Okay, Sharon wants to know, could you explain the corner hack again with the angles? Sure, and I probably should draw it for you because it's harder to see um, just with my hands. So let me see if I can get a piece of relatively clean paper. <laughs> so with this pillow project, I cut just, ta-da, some squares. That is my background fabric for the front and the back. I sewed along the squares, I turned it right side out, and then you have these little kind of dog ear points, right? It almost looks curved, even though I sewed it completely straight. If you don't want that look, 
what you want to do, let me draw a little bit bigger of a square so you can see. All right, so that's a little bit bigger. What you want to do is actually taper the corners a little bit. Uh, let me see how, how I can show this to you. Um, all right, so you will kind of, <laughs> this is really hard to draw. It shouldn't be that hard. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is the corner we're looking at here. I've circled it. You kind of want to cut into your corners to taper it a little bit. Then you'll sew, you're almost, you're almost sewing a curve along all four sides, but it's ever so slight. Um, there is a specific formula you could follow. I know there's a great tutorial on um, sew for home. Sew the number four home. They have a great tutorial on this. Um, we've published a couple in the past, but you want to taper the corner just a little bit on all four sides. And then when you go to stuff it, it actually looks straight across with no little dog ears um, along the edges. So I hope that was a little bit more clear. All right, that explains it. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, people are talking about filling this with walnut shells to make their uh, pin cushion uh, sturdier and uh, more like an actual pin cushion. So that's a great idea. Okay, crushed walnut shells really help to sharpen the needles. So that's great. I love when you all help each other out in the chat. That's great. Let's see if we have any more questions. Keep them coming because I've got one more project to go through and we will be working with the Poly Star. So um, I can't let a week go by without showing you something with Poly Star. I just love it so much. And yes, Betsy, this pillow is something I could use Rick Rack on. Exactly. Any fun trim that you have, again, dive into your stash. See what you have on hand and make some really great things. And then all you need is some fun thread, some sparkle, some trim, some ribbons, some fun little sewing notions. You could actually put a pocket on the back of this pillow, basically add a third uh, square of fabric, fold over the top edge, sew it in so there's a little pocket. You could slip a gift card in there. You could slip a little sewing charm, sewing necklace, that type of thing in the back. What a great idea that would be. Just add to the gift. All right. Sandra is loving pom-poms too. Thank you so much. My name is Ellen and I'm addicted to pom-poms. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move forward with our Hanukkah wall hanging. Like I said, you can use any old design that you like for the center focal point of this project. Now, I, oh, sorry. Before I go, I forgot to show you my little ornament being used as a pin cushion. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm calling this a wall hanging. You can hang it on your wall. It also makes a great centerpiece for your table. Okay, so it's not very large, as you can see. It's kind of like placemat size almost. It's a little bit smaller than placemat size. Um, you could use it as a placemat, of course, but then you're going to be covering up that beautiful embroidery along the center. Um, all the links to the designs and um, all the tutorial for this is also linked in the description of the post today. So go up and click see more and you'll find the tutorial for this that again, you can print out and have for reference and you'll get links to everything I used as well as these great designs. These designs are from uh, OESD's sister site, um, Sisters and Stitches, I wanna say. Oh, I hope I'm getting that right. It's in the blog post, so be sure to find it there. 
Um, this is from a collection called I Love You a Latka. I love you a Latka. <laughs> okay, I cracked myself up. All right, so, <laughs> um, oh goodness, now I've lost my place. Forgive me, I'm losing my eyesight. Okay, yes, here we go. So again, choose a design that you want in the center of your little wall hanging or your centerpiece. I love these Hanukkah designs. I mean, Hanukkah is the festival of lights, right? What better time to use sulky polystar thread than for the festival of lights? Because it is so shiny and shimmery and yet easy to sew and great for embroidery. Now, in the blog post, I talk about uh, making some adjustments to designs if you want to use this 30 weight sparkly thread for machine embroidery. Some designs will be totally fine with it. Now, this was a almost all line art design. There's a lot of just running stitches um, and very little fill on these thicker letters, okay? So I just tested it out. I did a test sew out using the Polystar and I didn't have to make any adjustments to my machine other than using a 9014 needle. For the embroidery. I paired it with sulky bobbin thread, which is a 60 weight bobbin thread, and it produced great balanced stitches. I didn't have any bobbin thread pulling up to the right side of the work. So this design worked great with the Polystar. Now, if you have chosen a design that has a lot of fill stitches, very, very dense stitching, lots of underlay stitching, uh, you probably either can't use the Polystar for it unless you have software and you know how to adjust the density, or maybe there are certain elements of that fill stitch design that you can sub Polystar in for. Maybe there are running stitch elements, little stars, things like that around the heavy fill stitches, and then you can sub out Polystar for just those little bits and you'll still have a nice pretty sparkle running through the work. So in the blog post, I talk about doing all of those things so that you can take a look at the design you want to do and see if it's going to work for Polystar or not. Always, always, always do a test stitch out when you are swapping thread weights in a machine embroidery design because a lot of the times you cannot go heavier and you cannot go lighter weight than a 40 weight, which is what is normally used for digitizing, okay? So just take that into account, do a test stitch. You can isolate a part of the design that, that maybe is the heaviest part of that design. Do a test stitch just in that area and see if it's gonna work for you or not, okay? So what I'm showing here are lots and lots of polystar spools because I was kind of auditioning them with the fabric that I was going to use. And I used Robert Kaufman Essex Linen. Love that fabric. And it comes with a really sparkly Essex linen. I hope you can see how metallic-y and sparkly that is, as well as the plain solid. So I use that sparkly fabric for my border piece, and then the plain solid is what I embroidered on. So I did a little bit of auditioning my thread against the fabric to see which ones I wanted to use for which portions of the design. Now, we've got a couple of assortments at sulky.com of Polystar Thread. There's a Polystar Silver Sampler, and it comes with six spools of all the really, really pretty silvery Polystar Metallics. So I thought that was a great idea to grab for a design such as this. Now, I had to actually combine a few different Polystar assortments to come up with this because I wanted gold as well as silver in my design. And the gold is not part of the silver sampler and the silver is not part of the gold sampler. So you can either go in and pick and choose individual spools um, or you can grab up the sulky winter Polystar six pack and that comes with some blues, some silvers, things like that. Um, but the assortments are the way to go because you get a much better deal than buying the spools individually. All right, so uh, for this with the Essex linen fabric, first I fused a layer of Sulky Soft and Sheer Extra. That is that lightweight, nice fusible stabilizer 
It's going to stay with the project for the rest of its life. It is a cutaway stabilizer that's uh, or a fusible cutaway, and I fused it along the entire square of fabric and uh, with the intention that it would stay with the work forever. I also used an additional layer of Sulky Tear Easy, and that was to give me more stability for all of that dense satin stitching uh, that you see here for that lettering to support the poly star and my heavier needle. So the tear away, I'm actually going to remove when embroidery is complete, leaving that soft and sheer extra behind. Okay. All right. Some people are asking, where do you find the Essex linen? Um, it's available in a lot of different places. I link directly to it in the blog post that I linked to, um, in the description of today's post. So head on over to the Hanukkah wall hanging post. You'll get direct links to all the fabric that I used, all the materials that I used for this project. All right, so after your embroidery is complete, you will add these border pieces to the work. And that is where I used that pretty Essex linen uh, sparkle fabric for that border piece. The lighting is a little off in this photo. You might be able to see it a little bit better here. Really, really pretty metallic linen thread. All right, so that's what I used for my border pieces. So add those, and then you're gonna layer your quilt sandwich. So you have your upper fabric that's embellished, your batting, and your backing fabric. And we're gonna secure all of those using our trusty Sulky KK2000, okay? Make sure everything's nice and flat and pressed, and then you're gonna go ahead and start quilting. Now, the quilting is up to you. I used the Polystar again, swapped out the color for a really pretty, really pretty silvery color to match that Essex linen, and I simply went around the perimeter of the design, and it ends up looking like this uh, Star of David kind of pattern. And then I just went across the entire work outline quilting that center motif. So if you chose a design that is a circle, you would just go in concentric circles along the entire work. And that's a really good way to sort of frame an embroidery design. I love that look. All right, and then you will trim up your fabric squares. Just use a rotary cutter mat and ruler trim it up, and then bind it in the method of your choice. Now, I used a very, very, very narrow binding. Just I just love that look of the really skinny, skinny binding on this. It's, a, again, a small wall hanging slash centerpiece slash piece for your table. And I just thought a thicker binding was gonna run into my border a little bit too much. I wanted it to be daintier. So I did a really, really narrow binding, mitered the corners as I reached them. Again, using my Clover Wonder Clips, I actually use those in every one of these projects and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> but there are the Wonder Clips in action, uh, holding that super, super skinny binding. Now, if I was going to try to pin this binding in place, not only do I run the risk of maybe snagging that linen, um, but the binding is just so thin, it, the pin isn't going to really do it justice. It's not really gonna hold it as much as we need it to. So again, great use for those Clover Wonder Clips. So bind that in the method of your choice. I always hand sew my binding to the back of the work. It's a little bit tedious, but in something that is small like this, you'll be done in no time, and you'll have a nice, nice professional finish along the back side. I mean, this looks, Pretty, as pretty from the front as it does on the back. You could even do another uh, embroidery design in the center of your work on the back side and make this reversible. So another great idea. All right, so then we have our pretty, pretty finished Hanukkah themed wall hanging slash centerpiece. So again, change this up based on the designs that you have um, or the designs that you love, but Really, you gotta check out the uh, I Love You Alatka embroidery collection uh, from the OESD folks. So um, 
some really, really cute options in there. And I posted some other ones of my, some other kind of cheeky designs from that collection um, on the blog post. So head on over to blog.sulky.com and check those out. Again, all of the links for everything I talked about today are in the description of the post. So let me see if we've got some more questions that have come in. And I want to make sure. Oh, Denise says the Essex linen is out of stock. Darn, any other place to order it? Um, I would just Google it, you know, Google Essex linen and uh, see what you can find. Um, I apologize that it's out of stock, but you know what? You could use any quilting cotton for this project as well. There are a lot of quilting cottons that have this kind of metallic look to them. I've seen a lot that are like snowflake uh, themed. So that's really cute as well. Marsha's asking, what is the size of the design? Um, I don't have that handy. It's in the blog post though. I want to say it's around five by five and a quarter ish. Uh, maybe it's more like five and a quarter by six, uh, roughly. So you do need a five by seven hoop for that big design for the center. Bonnie is asking, do you ever quilt inside the embroidery? Um, I do not. I like the embroidery to really um, pop and I don't wanna compete with that design at all. I can't say that I've ever quilted inside the embroidery unless maybe there's an open area that you could add um, an additional design or some free motion quilting or something like that too. All right, Jolene, thank you. She says, I love that you're reminding us of all the things we can do with the basic ideas. I can get stuck in the box. I completely get that, you know? Sometimes we see, you know, a Hanukkah project and we think, oh, I'm not Jewish, I'm not gonna make the Hanukkah project. Well, you're really just learning the technique, you know, or same difference. It's a Christmas project and, oh, I don't celebrate Christmas. Um, that doesn't mean that you won't learn anything from that project and you can adapt it for what you love and the holidays that you celebrate. Marsha loves the sparkles and the linen fabric. I know, me too, me too. <laughs> all right, let's make sure that we are getting all the questions. Okay, Sandy likes that we showed off the backside. Um, that's another thing I love about quilting. Now, I did wanna mention, I used that Polystar in the bobbin when I did the quilting. Not when I did the embroidery, but when I did the quilting, I changed to the Polystar. Can you see that? I'm trying to get a light on it. It's really hard to do these sparkles justice. You've just gotta grab some and try it for yourself. Um, but again, in the whole vein of having something reversible or just as pretty on the wrong side, for the quilting, I did use that Polystar in the bobbin. Oh, thank you, Janet. She says, I'm always learning something new here. All right. Esther didn't find the link to the designs on the Hanukkah wall hanging post. So Esther, they're in the supply list. So at the very start of the post, you'll find the link in the supply list for the project. Um, and if you have additional questions, just it, or if you still can't find it, email us at info at sulky.com and we will get right back to you. Dina wants to know, can you machine wash and dry a project made with polystar thread? You can. Now, the important thing is that you're, you don't have your dryer on super duper high heat. Um, that's just what I've been told by the manufacturer of this thread, by the sulky people, um, which I know I'm a sulky person, um, but I didn't make those rules. <laughs> um, so don't have your, your dryer on super, super high heat. Same goes for your iron. You don't want your iron screaming hot when you're working with the Polystar. Um, in fact, I just, you know, press it on medium low or medium heat and you'll be fine. Um, I did a really pretty gauze throw um, where I quilted across the entire length of the throw using Polystar and the needle and the bobbin on a double gauze fabric. 
I threw that thing in the washing machine and the dryer. It was completely fine. Um, but again, I did it on medium low heat and um, I didn't have a problem. All right, yes, lots of projects uh, go nicely for the holidays. And you know, if you all need something to do this weekend um, in lieu of visiting family, since we're not supposed to be traveling and all that stuff, you know, why not start making holiday gifts or continuing your holiday gift sewing and your handmade holidays um, moments that you're having in your studio and your sewing room. So I hope that these three projects gave you some inspiration to create something really fun this weekend. And even if you can't go out and purchase supplies, you can always get them at sulky.com and you can always dive into your fabric scraps and make something beautiful. So whether or not whether you're making your thread spool stockings, your cute little sewing themed ornaments, or your Hanukkah or other holiday wall hangings, I hope you're having a great time doing it and having a lot of success using and working with Sulky products. If you ever need to reach us, again, email us at info at sulky.com. We are always here to answer your questions and to help guide you through your projects. And again, our freebie today, which I will be announcing tomorrow um, in about 24 hours, our freebie today is the 30 weight cotton holiday sampler. So a lot of colors that you'll be using for the holidays and beyond. All right, so best sellers in 30 weight cotton is in uh, that sampler. So grab it up. Get your stocking stuffers before the holidays, um, before the holiday rush to ensure that, you know, you get sh it shipped on time. And again, write down your coupon code BLACK35 for our pre-Black Friday sale, 35% off your order at sulky.com. So be sure to write down that coupon code, add it to your order when you are uh, grabbing up all of your cute little stocking stuffers and gifts for your sewing friends. So have a very, very happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope that you will be fat and happy and ready to tackle some sewing projects this weekend. And I will see you next time.